Good evening and welcome to the live stream of the Bible study of the Abundant Love Church. I am Pastor Gary Bush. I am delighted that you've taken this opportunity to tune in this evening as we study the word of the Lord. Jesus declared in Matthew 4 and 4 that man doesn't live by bread alone, but he lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So we're here tonight to see what the Lord has to say so that we can uh, make the wise decisions for our life. And so on tonight, we're going to have a song here. We're going to have a word of prayer, a few announcements, and then we'll go into our lesson for this evening. Um, praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock and fortress. He's my deliverer and give all trust. Go like this. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise
We thank you for it now, and we ask it all in the matchless name of Jesus Christ and the Lord's people said, thank God. Amen. 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 And amen. All right, God bless you tonight. We're going to have our announcer come at this time and give us the announcements for the week. Our announcer for this evening is Sister Camille Slaughter. Would you all receive her with a hearty amen? Amen. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Due to the pandemic, we are not having regular worship services at this time, but we are still having our live stream services and they are open for limited attendance on Wednesdays and Sundays. Our upcoming events are, um, we will have our family prayer. It will resume back on the second Sunday, which is June 13th. We will also have an evening of community prayer for justice for Jabari Sunday, the 13th as well, from 6 to 7 p.m. here at the church. Our sick and recovering um, are Philip Johnson, Flora Johnson, and Rayfield. And there are no birthdays this week. And if you would like to contribute, you can find us on Cash App at dollar sign Abundant Love Church. Give the fly at Abundant Love Church. Our mailing PO box is 6577 Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46896. Or you can drop it off here at the church, 2615 New Haven Avenue, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Thank you. That is all of your announcements. Praise the Lord. All right, we have a treat this evening. We have a couple of, uh, it's our custom now to use a couple of uh, associates to help teach the points of our lesson tonight. Uh, but we are so favored this evening to have a wonderful and remarkable praise voice in the room with us on tonight. And so we're going to be favored with a selection now from Sister Amisha Drew. Would you all receive Amisha Drew with a hearty amen as she sings the praises of the Lord for us this evening. Here she comes. She's coming. Yes, she is. Oh, yes, she is. Come on. Yes, she is. All right. Little encouragement gets them all in places, though. All right. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, I said praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, I know it's a Wednesday evening, but I said praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, open your mouth and give your God some praise in here. Come on, right there on the line, right where you are. Open your mouth. I don't care if you're in your living room. Open your mouth and give God some praise in this place. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. Oh, uh, thanks, Bishop. <laughs> um. Well, since I have a couple people in here that can sing, <clears throat> y'all can help me oh, yeah. lift it up. Anybody know this is the day that the Lord has made? And it says we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. So something simple that says, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made.
many glad people in the house tonight? Look at somebody and say, He has made me glad. Okay, oh, wait, wait. This is Wednesday. This, this is Wednesday night. This, amen. Did you enjoy it? Presence of the Lord. How many know the Lord has made you glad? The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. God bless you tonight. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We thank the Lord for this new month of June and for our theme for this particular month. Our theme for the month of June is Spirit Led. And we derive that theme from primarily the background is the eighth chapter of the book of Romans. But we zeroed in on about five verses, verses 14 through 18. And so we'll read them in your hearing this evening from the King James Version. That's Romans 8, verse 14 to 15, 16, 17, and 18. Man, I feel like running now. <laughs> all right, all right, God. I, I'm going have to learn to bring my shouting shoes on Wednesday night. Okay, Romans 8, 14 through 18 reads like this. It says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. 15 says, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Verse 16 says, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Verse 17 says, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may also glorify, be, may be also glorified together. Verse number 18, last verse says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. May the Lord Bless his word. You may be seated on this evening. Our theme, our teachings, and our preachings all throughout this month are spirit-led. And, of course, it should be the desire of every child of God to be led by the Spirit of God. In fact, the Apostle Paul tells us that the children of God are led by the Spirit of God. That is, every child of God should be led by God's Spirit. But my question tonight is, what does it mean to be led by God's Spirit? By definition, to be led is to allow someone to go before you, to show you the way, to advise and give you directions to a determined destination. It is to allow them to be your guide. To be spirit led then is to allow the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity to give us life direction, to show us the ways that we should conduct our lives. And in allowing God to lead us, we find that there are a number of different avenues that God uses. Uh, I believe it's in Hebrews that says that God at sundry times and divers manners spoke in time past. And so God was not relocated to one way of speaking. He uses many avenues to speak. And so it is to be led by the Spirit of God. There are different avenues that the Spirit of the Lord will use to lead the believer, the child of God, in the direction that they should go. And so... Uh, here tonight and for the next couple of weeks, we're going to examine some of those avenues. And so I'm going to give you uh, a list tonight and then we'll cover a couple of them tonight and we will cover a couple of them for the next couple of weeks. Okay. And these are the different avenues that God will use to lead you by his spirit. Number one is prayer. Number two 
the word of God. Number three, the spirit of God. Number four, godly leadership. Number five, church fellowship. And number six, prophetic utterance. Let me give you that list one more time. It is number one, prayer. Number two, the word of God. Number three, the spirit of God. Number four is godly leadership. I could even say God ordained leadership. Number five is church fellowship. And then number six is prophetic utterance. These are not all, but these are a few of the avenues that the Lord will use uh, to guide you by his spirit. There are even some that I didn't mention tonight. You'll find throughout the scripture that God sometimes uh, led people uh, by dreams. He revealed things to them by dreams. He revealed things to them by visions. And we'll cover a little bit of that when we talk about prophetic utterance. But if you want to be spirit-led as, as a child of God, and you should be spirit-led as a child of God, we want to make sure that we make use of all of these avenues so we can be sure that we're going the direction that the Lord uh, would have us to go. I'm going to say this and then we got a couple of speakers tonight I'm going to bring. Uh, there is a theological uh, principle. It is called the law of first occurrence. That is the first time you encounter something in the word of the God, in the word of God. Normally what you see it doing is what it will be doing throughout the course of the scriptures. And the first mention of the spirit of God is that that spirit moved upon the face of the waters. The Bible says that the earth was without form and void. And it said the spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. And so one of the aspects or characteristics that we understand of the spirit of God is that it's not a stagnant, still dead spirit. It's a moving spirit. And to be led by the Spirit of God simply means to be able to discern and detect which way the Spirit is moving and to move with it. Amen? Amen. So on tonight, we are blessed to have a couple of uh, great, it's, it's just a wonderful uh, thing to have associates here with us, people that love the Word, love the church, that are able to bring the Word of the Lord tonight. And so on this evening, we have two particular uh preachers and teachers that are going to help us this evening, and they are well qualified for these subjects that they're going to handle tonight. Uh, the first subject tonight is prayer, and prayer will be handled by evangelist, uh, I call her Drew Drew, but it's evangelist Vera Drew. She is absolutely uh, the miracle of, can I say one of the miracles of Abundant Love Church after being dead, clinically dead, brain dead, in the hospital for four days. The Lord brought her back to life and we're able to receive teaching here from our modern day Lazarus. So would you all receive Evangelist Vera Drew with a hearty amen. 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 Praise the Lord. As Pastor just said, I am Evangelist Vera Drew, and my topic for tonight is prayer. When I looked up prayer, it was a whole lot on prayer, so I said, now let me ask the Lord, be spirit-led on how to condense it. By definition, prayer means aligning and communing with God, our Creator, or interacting with God for petition, thanksgiving, or to change a situation. Just keep in mind that it is communication, not that we just talk to God and then get up, which is what we do a lot of time. We talk to God, God listens, and then we listen for an answer. Amen. When I was younger, we were taught to use the acronym ACTS to align our prayer. A was for adoration. C was for confessing our sins. T was for thanksgiving unto God, and S was for supplication, which means praying for the needs of ourselves and others. Later on, they looked at the, uh, what we call the Lord's Prayer, that model prayer, and they found seven. They kept petition, 
I mean, they kept uh, adoration and thanksgiving, but they added petition. And one of the scriptures they used was Philippians 4 and 6. They added lament from Peter, 1 Peter 5 and 7, deliverance from Psalm 3, contrition from Psalms 51, 1 to 4, and guidance from Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. But then as I kept reading, people kept adding more and more. It went to 11. The next one I looked at was 20. So then I stopped reading because I said, I thought about the Israelites, how they started with 10 commandments and ended up with 400. And I didn't want to look up 400 aspects of prayer. So I said, we'll, we'll end with the Lord's prayer. <laughs> Amen. Uh, we need to pray, uh, prepare ourselves for prayer before we pray. And in order to be prepared, we have to have a clear conscience. There may be some hidden things that we need to address that may hinder us before we pray. James 4 and 3 says, Ye ask and receive not, because you ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your lust. In other words, when you pray, you have to get down with the right motive. Psalm 66 and 18 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. In other words, you can't get down to prayer if you are still holding some unconfessed sins. Proverbs 28 and 9 says, He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. So if you're disobedient, that's a hindrance to your prayer. Matthew 5, 23 to 24 basically tells us, and we always know that uh, we shouldn't have an ought against somebody when we pray. But the Bible tells us we, if we know that somebody has an ought against us, we have to go to them. And, in order, and if you do these things, these are just a few of the things that you need to be aware of before you pray. But as I read many prayer scriptures, the one that stood out the most to me was James 5, 16b, which says, The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And that became my favorite prayer scripture. So let's break down that scripture. First of all, it says that you uh, these are the prayers of a righteous man. So how do I qualify for being righteous? Because the Bible says there, there's none righteous. So it's like, okay, Lord, well, now how can I uh, bow down with a righteous prayer? Romans 5, 18 says, Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto the justification of life. So we become righteous through the free gift of God. Then it says your prayer must be fervent. Fervent means impassioned, forceful, wholehearted, sincere, and powerful. And what we cannot pray is memorized prayers. We get to the point where, you know, a lot of times they say pray, and we can go straight to the Lord's Prayer. That's memorized, and yes, that's a prayer. But are we doing that wholehearted, or are we just memorizing? A lot of times when we get ready to go to bed at night, it's, now I lay me down to sleep. Is that a fervent prayer? I don't think so. It's something we memorize. We even have scripture we memorize over our meals. But as we mature, our prayer should mature. Once we pray to the Lord and seek his will, we'll know how to go down in prayer. Matthew 6 and 7 says, but when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. And a lot of people think that means, okay, if I pray about it one time, I can leave it alone. Jesus went in the garden and prayed, saying three, three times. So that's not what that scripture means. What it means is just babbling. You know, sometimes we get up and we don't really know what to pray. Well, Lord, go all the way up in Africa. Lord, go. And, and you know, we're not, we're not praying fervently or passionately. We're just saying some words. And that's what the Bible said we should not do. Uh, Romans 8 and 6 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh us intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So if you get down on your knees and you don't know what to pray for, ask the Holy Ghost. Be Spirit-led. And the, the Spirit will tell you what you need to pray for at that time. 
The other word says our prayer should be effectual. And I looked that up. And effectual means in a manner to produce the intended or desired effect. So when you go down to pray, whatever you want to pray about, you want that prayer to produce that desired effect. And we just don't that we just don't get down on our knees and say, Lord, I thank you for everything and everyone. Amen. No. We have a purpose, we should, when we get down on our knees. If we're doing an intercessory prayer, we should be praying for intercession, for somebody's healing, somebody's salvation, somebody's deliverance. Even when we give thanks, we get down on our knees and, and we find something to be thankful for. And that makes it effectual. The last part of James 5, 16 says, availeth much. Avail means to be of use or advantage. We definitely want to be in a place where our prayer is beneficial not only to us, but to the person we're praying for, and we want it to glorify God. And yes, we want the effect to be abundant. We want much out of what we pray for. To sum it all up, remember that there are several aspects of prayer and you know, you can look up the list. You don't have to find 400, but you can look up the uh, <laughs> different types of prayer. Uh, make sure that you have a clear conscience when you pray. A lot of times that's why our prayers are hindered because we got so much other baggage going on, we can't even let the prayer get through. And no matter what you do when you get down, make sure that when you go down in the righteousness bestowed upon you as a gift from God, pray wholeheartedly, and sincerely so that your prayers will produce the desired effect in abundance. Amen. And that's how to be led by the Spirit in prayer. Amen. 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 Very good. Wasn't that good teaching? Yes. Amen. Did it inspire you to do uh, more valiantly, if I can say so, when it comes to our prayer life? And she did mention something there at the end that one of the jobs of the Spirit of God is to lead us in prayer. Sometimes, uh, it's been my experience, sometimes I get down to pray for one thing and I end up praying for something totally different. And the Bible says that the Spirit will make intercession for us. So we thank the Lord and we thank Sister Drew for such wonderful teaching at this time. Amen. 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 All right. Well, we're going to have another selection from Sister Amisha Drew while we have her here now. Hasn't she just been a blessing, Nikki? Can you just feel the exuberance in the room? And so, sister, 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 sister here she comes. Sister, sister Amisha is going to come this evening and she's going to sing again for us. Everybody say amen and receive Sister Amisha. Amen. Oh, he got me again. I thought he was joking. <laughs> uh, you know what? So I had a I had a song in mind, but just follow the Holy Spirit. Um just because I'm thankful for a lot of things that God has done for me. <laughs> How can I say thanks for the things you've done for me? Things so undeserved, and yet you gave to prove your love for me. The voices of a million. With his blood. 
done for me all things so undeserved and yet you still gave to prove your love for me the voices of a million angels they selecting her song tonight because every now and then you know I, I didn't try not to magnify too many things that the enemy does but uh, we had quite a battle today but her song reminds us that through it all we can give God thanks because how many know even when it's bad it's good yeah. because all things work together for good, good to them that love. love God to them that are called according to his purpose. Amen. All right. So we want to continue here uh, in spirit led. Uh, we want to thank Sister Drew for such a wonderful job teaching us about being led by the spirit in prayer. And of course, on tonight, we have another teacher. Uh, we have uh, evangelist Cynthia Franks, who's going to come and to teach and tell us about being led by the Spirit by the Word of God. So would you all see Evangelist Cynthia Symphony Franks with a hearty amen. Thank 
Keep them in the midst of thine heart, which means we should always ask first what God's word says about what we're doing. We sing songs like, order my steps in your word, dear Lord. <laughs> then we go further, lead me, guide me every day. Yeah. Then we ask him to send his anointing, Father, I pray. But am I really hearing what I'm saying? Because there are times that people, just because they can sing, and it sounds good. Then they like, okay, I'm going to sing this because I can. Forgetting who gave you the gift. Forgetting who anointed you. I, I have to be careful as I, got, as, I, as, I, as, I, as I have gotten older. I'm learning now to pick songs that will do what I need for my spirit, not because it's popular. And a lot of times, you'll hear a lot of people get up and take the word of God and just use the scripture because it's popular to them. How many people you get up, oh, I will bless the Lord at all times. Will you? <laughs> at all times? Even in the good and the bad. Will you? Yeah. Hmm. Lord, I love you more than anything. Do you? <laughs> and I'm not throwing off on that, but think about it. When you tell somebody you love them more than anything, and then they turn around and ask you for something, and you say no. <laughs> really? You defeated what you said. So you have to be careful what you say, especially as saints of God, you got to be careful what you say, how you say it. Because it can be detrimental to you. To you. Because you'll say this and then your co-workers will be like, I don't know how she can say that when she be doing this at work. I didn't even... If we do not submit to him, it won't do us any good. We can say we love him. We can say all this. If you don't put in your heart that you're going to totally submit yourself to God, you're just kind of saying it so it'll make yourself look good. Don't do that. Matthew 6.33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all this righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. When you do that and not seek advice of Facebook, Instagram, media as a whole, your friends, sometimes your family, <clears throat> and you do that and, it's, and instead of doing that, you seek God first, you will be guaranteed to be, guaranteed to be victorious. In closing, <laughs> my first thought was meditate on the word of God. Say it for me. My second one is be a doer of the word of God. And my third one is put the word of God above all else. And that's my lesson for tonight. Amen. Amen. What are those wonderful points? Amen. All this month we're going to talk about being led by the Spirit of God. Remember again that to be led means to allow the Spirit of the Lord to be your guide. I think we can have some key takeaways from our teachers tonight. Uh, we do know that prayer 
is vital to communicating with God. The Bible says that we ought always pray. And there are many times that God will give you direction through prayer. And I think particularly of people like Ezra and Nehemiah. Before they went back to build the walls and get things situated, they not only surveyed the land, but they prayed to the Lord about what they were supposed to do. And the Bible tells us to pray in all situations concerning everything. And then secondly, uh, the Spirit of the Lord is going to always use the Word of God. The good thing about the Word of God is that the Spirit of the Lord is not going to tell us anything contrary to the Word. And so basically, you can read the Word. The Bible says it's spiritually discerned. That is, the Spirit of the Lord will help you to understand it. And many times, you don't have to guess about it if the Word has said it. I need to say that again. Some things you need to pray about. Okay? Yeah. Someone asks you to do something and whether or not you should do it. Uh, you should absolutely pray about it. But there are certain things that the Bible has told us to do that you don't have to pray about. Amen. The Bible has said do it, and then we want to be found doing what the word of the Lord says. And so uh, it's a good written barometer. It's a good written record of what God has said to his people. And then the Bible is very explicit about us as children of God knowing the word of of the Lord. Look at somebody and say, you better know the word. Amen. Amen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. Amen. So as we examine being led by the spirit of God on this next week, I want to work uh, on our prayer life. We want to designate special time, closet time, more time into spending time communicating with God. And then if you haven't been doing it, I want to encourage you to read the word of God every day. Sister Drew talked about just saying things and not really paying attention to what we say. Sister Cynthia talked about singing things and not really paying attention to what we say. I want to reference the Lord's Prayer. The Bible says, give us this day our daily bread. Daily bread. So there's a piece of bread for every day to help you get through. Amen. Amen. All right. We want to thank Evangelist Drew and we want to thank Evangelist Franks for such wonderful teaching on this evening. Yeah, we want to thank Sister Amisha Drew for singing for us this evening. And I, you know, I'm not going to start anything, but she can really just come any Wednesday night that she want to come by and just wave at us and say hi. We'll let her say hi, won't we? Yeah. Amen. Of course. Uh, very dependable musicians, Ebony Dupree, amen, Corey Weber, amen, our sound uh, production engineer, Camille Slaughter, and sound man extraordinaire, Christopher Hathaker, as we have enjoyed the Lord tonight. Amen? Amen. amen. All right, God bless you. Let's stand. Let's have a word of prayer and let's be dismissed on this evening. Always remember Jesus, Jesus. Always remember Jesus, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for your anointing and your presence here among us. We thank you for the word that was spread and shared tonight. We pray, Father, that this word would go into the good ground of the heart, that it would bear fruit and edify the hearer. We pray, O oh God, for these that broke open your word tonight, Sister Drew and Sister Franks. We pray, pray God, brother, your blessings upon them. We pray that you would work the will and the do in them. And then, Father, enlarge their territory. Bless them indeed as they continue doing your will. Bless our church. Remember us. We that love you and give your name praise. Now, Father, as we prepare to go several different directions, go with us and keep us until we are able to come together again. And we ask it all in the matchless and the mighty name of Jesus Christ and the Lord's people said, thank God. Amen. Amen. Amen.
and amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening.